Hi guys, Kim here. Welcome to Backyard Blooms. In today's video, we're going to take a tour of the North Carolina Arboretum. We're here in Asheville, North Carolina, and we're going to see if we can find some gorgeous fall colors and some pretty blooms. So this is the entrance to the Arboretum. This is the Welcome Center. Look at this gorgeous hedge of boxwoods. Can you understand why I love my boxwoods? And then on the other side, they have a really good display of fall. The mums. I don't know if that's charred. I'm trying to find a sign for it, but I can't really find one. Anyways, look how gorgeous this is. Lattes right here are massive. They're way taller than 15 feet tall. A little mum display here. Bells and Dusty Miller. I like that variegated leaf. I think this is a camellia. The bees are loving these blooms. That's 
some kind of holly since it's got all those little red berries on it. So that tree was a flying dogwood, not a holly. And we got some gorgeous mums, some cabbages. They have that Coreopsis that I just planted in my garden here. find a, a lavender that does really good in my garden. This one is a Munstead lavender. Little home for bees. This pond, those water features, gorgeous. This is a different kind of water plant pitcher plant. Look at the blooms up close on that. Is that not gorgeous? I always love water in a garden. A little fake bridge. The sign here says the making of a quilt garden. And as we swing around here, you can see where they made or quilt garden. So this is a higher up view. We're just on some stairs here. That's what this little quilt garden looks like. Higher up with mums and kale. And it's October and they're getting ready for their Christmas decor. Loving all their sculptures here. Another sculpture. They have some upright boxwoods here. And they're taller than me. This grass has some gorgeous purple hues to it. Love the grass in a garden. It gives it some movement. We have some volunteers helping with the Christmas decor. I bet it'd be beautiful here at nighttime with all these lights. They have lights on the trees. Bartlett Tree Expert is one of their partners and actually just right down the road from me is the Bartlett Research Center. So that's pretty exciting. So you have some hollies here and oh they are really pretty. Quite tall. They have gorgeous shiny red leaves with all these red berries like a park as we stroll around this arboretum. Lots of families here with their dogs. And there's my awesome husband over there. He's doing my thing today and tomorrow we get to do his thing on the tail of the dragon.
husband was just telling me they have a little railroad model. Let's go see. Her pots are gorgeous with these lovely fall colors and violas. I'll have to find out what that plant is. We have some kale. Railroad. There's a railroad from a distance there. Let's get a little closer. So I'm assuming Abigail's toy store. Help sponsor this demonstration here. You can see the railroads and all the little tiny towns. A nice little setup. It's a bridge. Going over the little creek area. All their plants that they have here aren't really overgrown, so it looks nice and miniature. I'm just looking at how fiery orangey. Fiery orangey. I'm just admiring how gorgeous this orange is on this color trees right here. Nice fall color. They have a little bonza exhibition garden. Let's go see. different examples. I guess this is really no difference than trimming up a little topiary tree. Love this one since it is fall. This one's a Japanese white pine. My all-time favorite, Japanese maple. And you can see how tiny it is with my hand. Carolina hemlock. says the extensive use of native stone in the garden evokes the experience of a mountain environment. In keeping with the Arboretum Southern Appalachian setting, stone is also used to suggest a dry stream running from the upper end of the garden to a pool at the lower end. Martha's Magic Garden. Here's the stone with the stream running down to the end that we just read about. This is the dry stream. It says the stream bed is intended to be dry. The only time it carries water is when it rains. With the dry stream, the waters is suggested, the water must be supplied by your imagination. 
The element of suggestion and the accompanying need for imagination are essential parts of the bonsai experience and the bonsai view of nature. What is not there can be as important as what is. So use your imagination. I can picture the water running down the stream and the sound. And it extends over this bridge down to the end. I guess they really don't know how old most of these things are. So it's essentially just a guesswork. Don Redwood. Oh, that's unique. It's called the Ogre. Is that how you say that, Paul? Ogre? Heart Full of Hollow. It's another red maple. Fall Cypress. Atlas Cedar, and this one's called Up on Slingshot Ridge, and this one is Mount Mitchell, and this one is a Kinko. Sun talks about the truth about bonsai. There is, there is an imagine a bonsai as a mystical, magical practice belonging to an ancient culture requiring apprenticeship to a master and knowledge of foreign terms. Bonsai is actually an engaging, challenging, intimate form of horticulture that functions as a form of creative expression. Based on one-on-one -on -one relationships between a person and a plant, it requires practice and persistence and patience. Bonsai gardens lovingly tend to their subjects and the plants respond with health and beauty. The art of bonsai is a study in vitality produced by thoughtful and careful management of perpetual growth. And this one is called Swamp Giant. This is a perfect example of what an oak leaf hydrangea looks like in the garden. You can see the spent blooms on it, but you can also see the gorgeous fall leaves on that hydrangea. an American barberry. We have barberries in our landscape. This is another Japanese maple. We all know how really big these things get in our garden and for them to trim this up to make it this small is unreal. This is called the Grand Garden Promenade. some gorgeous containers here with some fall colors with grasses, violas. I'd say that's probably an aster. Dusty Miller. Some chard. Cauliflower. These purple colors are really pretty with that Dusty Miller. Yeah. We 
have some obelisk to give some hardscape here. Oh, my husband says obelisk. I say obelisk. I tried to catch that butterfly, but it just went away. It just went by this plant. It looks like a little Christmas ornament just hanging on this tree. No, it looks like some kind of a uh, hardy hibiscus, maybe. Let's see a name. Did you see all the beautiful fall colors here? After just looking at that bonsai, can you imagine how much they had to prune and how many years it took them to achieve that? Because this is the same Japanese maple. Acer. It's just amazing how they could get from this to that other little thing. It is truly magical. So, if you can hear, someone's playing music over here. came upon the sign it says what plant labels say for a long time people faced the problem that one living thing might have 50 common names depending on which language you spoke this caused all sorts of problems so biologist Carl how do you say that Linnaeus, Linnaeus decided in 1758 that everybody should be using the same names to describe something it's pretty cool It's called a remembrance spell. The title of this sculpture is called, O oh Great Spirit. I've caught my eye on another camellia. This kind of looks like something I'm going to plant, or I just planted in my garden, called the Apple Blossom. Camellia. Let me see if I can catch this butterfly. That's a monarch butterfly. It is loving this plant. This plant is called yellow wild indigo. It's a baptisia. This is a Japanese maple. Just to give you for size, like when things get big, back up here this you can see how tall my husband is he's six three but this is the limelight hydrangea and it is what seven foot tall Paul you think seven foot tall of course I have the little limes in my 
garden. You can see all the spent blooms on this tree. I'm loving all this ground cover. Well, that's what I'm working on in my garden right now. Get some ground cover. There's a lily. Kind of petite pink scotch rose. This is the mountains overlooking the Arboretum. We're in Asheville, North Carolina. I'd say this zone here, I'm a zone eight. I'm gonna guess that it's a zone seven or seven B in this location. grouping of containers here all together. There might be about 10 containers here. This flower is unique. Asters. Maybe some salvia, I'm guessing. Lattes are looking great. I hope you enjoyed this tour. It's a nice, easy half day trip from Charlotte, North Carolina to here to Asheville to the Arboretum. It's not very expensive. That's all you have to do is pay for parking to get in. They have a broad range of plants that we enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed all the nice blooms that I got to share with you. And my favorite part was the bonsai exhibition. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.